Welcome to the Franchise Woman Podcast, where passion and purpose collide, profits are made, and relationships forged. I'm Rebecca Monet, CEO and Chief Scientist at Zoracle Profiles, along with my co-host, community advocate, speaker, author, and entrepreneur, Tracy Kawa. Our special guest today is Carly Woolley. Carly is the Senior Director of Advertising for the International Franchise Association, aka the IFA, the world's largest membership association for franchisors, franchisees, and suppliers. In her current role, Carly leads the advertising department where she's responsible for all advertising media and sponsored content opportunities available through the IFA, as well as helping member companies develop advertising strategies to reach their goals. Woohoo! Carly, <laughs> finally, we have you on. I'm so glad that you were available. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I'm so happy to be here today. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, it's so nice to have you here. And let me say that this Brooklyn girl right here <laughs> loves your Southern accent. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> you're just I appreciate town, that. Yeah, you're just a small town girl and you're making an international impact. Rebecca and I would love to hear your origin story. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yes, small town. So I grew up in West Point, Georgia, um, small town about an hour south of Atlanta. Um, went to high school at a very small private school, graduated with 24 people, um, mm -hmm. and then moved on to Auburn University for college, where um, I was amongst 24,000 people. Oh, um, so definitely broadened my horizons fairly quickly um, and really had to uh, get used to, you know, kind of the bigger life really quickly because 24 to 24,000 is a bit overwhelming if you want to know the truth. <laughs> wow. I can only imagine, you know, it's kind of funny we, when you said West Point, I'm like, Oh, you know, just tell people you went to West Point or lived in West Point or whatever. That'd be very impressive, right? Right, right. So my my daughter uh, was born in West Point, okay, Nebraska, another tiny, tiny town. So what what a change for you to go from something small like that to something much larger. So in your opinion what what benefits came out of that did you learn to become adaptable did you i mean what that that would be like a shocker to me if i had to do that so what benefits came out of going from small to big absolutely so i think the biggest thing is that you quickly learn to get out of your comfort zone um I had to step out of my bubble and learn to meet new people, get involved in new organizations, really just put myself out there and make new connections. Because if you stay in your own bubble, then you're never going to, um, you're never going to do anything beyond that. And so being able to really step outside that comfort zone and, and meet new people and make those new connections made such a difference really in my college experience but then moving forward in my career as well, I really took that first step and, and really have kind of made a mantra for me um, throughout my career um, of kind of making a, a bigger step forward each and every time. Nice. Nice. Like stepping stones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. You know, so what's, what's fascinating to me about that is an extrovert kind of normally does that, right? Where they go into a situation, quickly they join the clubs, they go to that networking event, they go to that party, and they quickly sort of connect. But not all of us are extroverted and not all of us are comfortable in situations uh, like that. Would you consider yourself outgoing, gregarious, playful? I mean, is it easy for you to go into situations like that? I would. I would consider myself a gregarious, outgoing, extroverted person. And I think that my friends would say that as well. I think what was so difficult for me is that small 
small school, big fish, right? Involved in everything, talk, mm. all those things. And then you move to a, to a school where it's so large and then you become a nobody. And so you have to then begin paving the way um, mm. of who am I? Where is my place? How do I make a, you know, my footprint, my place here? And so it's really um, humbling to start over and, and to find your way in such a, such a big pond. Um, but challenge accepted. I, I loved my time at Auburn, um, found my way, found new connections, new friendships, new groups to be a part of, um, and just really loved the experience of, of growing. And that's why I think it's so fun to say, well, I graduated with 24 people. How about you? Um, just to, just to show people kind of not to be afraid of those big leaps and big steps. Yeah, that's a beautiful lesson in that. Mm-hmm. For sure. So what came next? You went into- um, Yep. So I graduated from Auburn in marketing. Um, I, uh, to be honest, I thought I was going to be in, in the medical field. Uh, tried that out, didn't work. Um, started taking marketing classes and fell in love, just loved everything about it. And so um, that's my advice for, for people is that once you start getting into the classes that you love the content and love the classes and look forward to it, that's where you need to be. So graduated in marketing and then I started a um, a sales position with a television station, an NBC affiliate in Columbus, Georgia. Um, worked there for five years. Had a girlfriend that was working there alongside me. She moved to Washington, D.C. Um, her husband worked for the FBI. Um, she worked for the IFA for about a year and then called me up out of the blue and said, hey, they have a position open. I think that you should apply. Um, I applied. The IFA flew me up for an all day interview, um, interviewed all day. And then about a week later, maybe had another interview and then got the job. So um, that was 14 years ago. Um and I have not looked back. So I have worked remotely for the IFA for the entire time that I've been with them. Um, I am still in the South. So I still currently reside in the Auburn, Alabama area outside of Auburn, still in a small town. Um, But yes, work for the IFA remotely still. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You're talking about this remote working, which is becoming more and more common today, but right. you, you've you been doing it 14 years, right? <laughs> right. At a time when we really don't, weren't using Zoom and some of these other uh, technologies. How, how did you, or what mindset did you even have that allowed you to work remotely and still connect with your teammates you know that are located in dc or and then your clients franchisors that are all over the world how how were you able to do that yeah so um i will say that it was difficult to begin with because you're trying to make these connections with this you know for the isa it's it's just this world of membership and so you're you're trying to let these people know who you are let them know that you're here to help them um and who you are as far as um on the team within the isa and so to begin with it was a struggle for sure because you know you just want to make connections. And so uh, through technology, sometimes that's difficult. Um, When I started at the IFA, we didn't have the luxury of Zooms. And so it was really all just through telephone calls and then, and then email. Um, A quick aside, um, for about when I started, for about the first year, I had not met my boss. And so it was literally almost a full year before I met him face to face. So that was a really funny wow. interaction um, to go, oh, hey, you're the voice on the other end of the phone. So nice to meet you. Um, that's that's something that I'll never forget. Um, but I think, you know, once I kind of got into the swing of things of my role with the IFA, I took a step back and said, okay, I have to figure out a way to connect with people because that is something that's really important to me and something that that guides me day in and day out in my job. And so 
I really tried to work on ways to be intentional about connecting. And so whether that was, you know, if we make a connection, then let's keep that connection. I want to know more about you than just what your goals are for the next year for your business. I want to know that too, but I really want to get to the heart and to the meat of what, of who people are. And so I really just worked at, at doing that. And, and really it was stepping stones along the way. So um, when I was at, finally was able to travel and go to events, I had a list. I wanted to make sure that if you and I had, you know, communicated that we were able to put faces mm -hmm. with names because those connections just are so important. It's like, you're the part, that's you, you oh. know, we talked for so long. And I will tell you after this many years in the business, there are still people that we've, all, we've never met. And so that is such a lovely thing. So I would say that, um, being intentional for me and, and really waking up every day and saying, you know what, I want today to be about the people I communicate with, seeing me for who I am, being genuine, transparent, and intentional so that I can make real connections with people. Wow. And, and you just strive at it every single day because you're behind a computer screen, you're remote. Um, and then making the most out of those in-person connections. So when you are at an event, hit the ground running and go and see as many people as you possibly can. Hi, I'm, you know, I'm Carly. We've only met, you know, and I'm a hugger too. So just get ready. Um, it might knock you down, but um, yeah. So it, it's definitely. Um, you know, as Tracy, I'm thinking here, I'm at an IFA conference or some <laughs> other event. And I, if I saw Carly, I would just be running down that hall at all, uh, to get a hug. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. You, you are authentic, real, transparent, and, and a happy, contagious uh, individual. Thank you. Thank you. That's really what I strive to be and what I want people to see in me, for sure. I keep seeing the thread of your life going from this small high school with 24 people where you had to know each other intimately. You were probably in elementary school with the same yes. people. Yes. Yes. Great point from K-5 all the way through. Right. Yes. So you had to know each other. I mean, you knew each other's families and parents, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. And then going to Auburn, 24,000 people and really having to dig deep and rely on what you had within bringing out that personality to be able to connect with others, then it all migrates to going online. Right. Right. And, and you're right. digging even deeper and you're thinking, well, how else can I connect? What else can I do? And it's this incredible migration. What do you attribute to the success that you've actually able to create for yourself? in each of these scenarios? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say a couple of things. I would say that um, one, I'm a faith-driven person. Um, I'm just, you know, driven by that as the ultimate for me each and every day. Um, the job is wonderful and it is amazing. Um, but my ultimate goal in waking up and, and interacting with anyone is that, you know, my light will shine and that people will see, you know, really my character and really, you know, that faith will shine through as well. Um, that I'm serving a bigger power, you know, that, um, that there's more to this life than just the here and now and just this. And so that's one of the biggest drivers for me. Um, second, I think that it, it's just, I'm consistently pushed forward and thinking that I just want, um, every day to be able to, to consistently be able to, um, really make more connections. And, you know, when I think about the position that I hold, having been in this job for 14 years, um, I tell anyone really that asks, I love the job, love the job, love the franchising space. Um, you know, they say, if you, if you love your, what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I really feel that way because getting to talk to new people, make connections, you know, make these new avenues and, and really, you know, meet new people is such a, such a blessing and something that, um, 
is, is really to be strived for. I think that, um, you know, I, I talk to people that are so unhappy where they are and where they sit in life. And um, I'm just not there. I'm in a place of, of really being happy where I am in the franchise space and the franchise community. We joked earlier about once you get in, you can't get out. Yeah. Um, but it's so true. Um, all of those things really drive me. Um, and I, I feel like they, they continue to propel me forward in the space for sure. So this purpose driven, this passion driven, faith based Carly that I see here, you're, you're, you're serving a big God and, and every day, you know, that, and you know, everything you do is a reflection of his image, right? And then you also have a, another purpose, which kind of goes hand in glove when I think about it, which is to promote franchising, right? Absolutely. So for, th for those that are listening in, and we've talked about IFA and International Franchise Association, and you don't know uh, who the IFA is, you need to. But Carly, can you take just a second and, and tell our listeners what the IFA, the International Franchise Association, uh, is all about? Absolutely. So the International Franchise Association is the association for franchising. Um, we were founded in 1960. We are made up of franchisors, franchisees, and supplier members. Um, our mission and our goal is to protect, enhance, and promote franchising. And we work to do that day in and day out. So no matter what side of franchising you sit on, we are working to help move forward and protect the franchise model. Um, I feel like most listeners will likely know a lot about the IFA, but if you are looking to get into franchising or even a new franchisee, or if you have questions about franchising, franchise.org is our website. And it's a great resource and tool just to get more information, um, to learn about franchise opportunities, learn about um, supplier members that can help you with what you might need as far as a franchisor um, or even just industry information. Um, we have a number of upcoming events that are great for the industry. Our flagship event will be once again in February, which um, I'm sure many of you've marked your calendars for. Um, but yes, continuing to work for all sides of franchising. All right. I should have asked you that uh, earlier, because we're going on and on and on about the That's IFA, okay. and I'm thinking, no, there are people that don't know what the IFA is, which is hard to believe. You need to know about the IFA. That's so right. I, I want to return us back to this fascinating conversation because I'm a scientist. I'm an extroverted scientist, but I'm a scientist and I'm of a certain generation, the baby boomer generation, that um, believes all communication needs to be professional. Right. right. So when I type uh, an email, it is short, it is sweet, it's properly spaced, the perfect spelling, and there's no revealing of my personality. It is to the point, you know, bottom line kind of uh, thing. And it really doesn't show a lot of what you called your authenticness, right? And your personality or probably doesn't have me come across as warm and fuzzy and certainly not extroverted. So tell me how you do that remotely. How do you be transparent, authentic, bring out this beautiful personality in a way when you're not face to face with people? Well, I think that it, it's like you said, it goes against what any business professor would tell you. And they're probably cringing if you were to send an email their way. Um, but early on for me personally, I just tried with my interactions. So obviously, if, if you're reaching out to the masses, you, you do keep it, you know, nice, short, sweet, professional. But then after that, I, I want to make a personal connection. And so for that, I'm, I'm going to 
to dig a bit deeper um, and try to get to know you a bit better. So whether that means that we can then jump on the jump on a call and I can get to know you a bit more that way, or just be real. And so um, communicating with with someone recently, and maybe she one of us messed up on something. It was like, oh God, I, I totally messed that up. You know, you just have to be real. And so I think that accepting our faults and being transparent, even through email, is really important. Um, I think instead of you, you sometimes have to take the mask off and just realize that you should be be yourself in all facets of life instead of trying to to be who um, sometimes you think you need to be in business or in life or in whatever it might be. Um, I think I told you all offline that, you know, starting out some in, in this in this business, especially with so many powerhouses in, in this industry, sometimes it's intimidating and you feel, oh, maybe I should be professional 100% of the time. And so starting out, I was a bit hesitant to be real and email, smiley face, hope you have a great day, um, you know, war eagle if it's football season, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and and really kind of held back on on my personality and who I was. But then I realized that the the more that people could see who I was, the more engaged we we became and really friends. Um, I, and I would call, you know, many of the people I work with friends more than just an acquaintance. Um, I, I strive for that, you know, to be able to to email, text, call, pick up the phone, call, pick up the phone, whatever it might be, any method of communication, just knowing that there's so many people that you've made connections with that have your back. Um, yeah, I, I think it, it's, it's a lesson to be learned and maybe something that we could all use in our, in our, um, in our tool belt. Yes. Carly, has there been any obstacle or challenge that you've had to overcome in your career along the way that maybe you learned a lesson from that you can share with the listeners? That's a really great question. Um, so I, I feel like we we faced small obstacles every day and failure is really just um, is just a step to the to the path forward and failure is necessity. But what I will say about an obstacle is I think back to really around 2019, 2020, right before um, the world fell apart with COVID. Um, for years, we had a fully staffed um, advertising team, advertising department. We had some departmental changes, um, some people left, you know, just changes in general. Long story short, we went from a robust department to me, just mm -hmm. me. And so currently, as the advertising department stands, still just me. Um, so I went from a very narrowly focused, defined um, role within the association to a much bigger role, um, seemingly overnight. Um, scary, felt a bit unprepared. Um, but I will say that it was a pivotal moment looking back now in my career because it was this it was what propelled me forward in this position and gave me the confidence to do all the things that that have really just happened for me professionally in the last two years um i think when when you sit in in maybe a particular place within your department um when, when it was just me, then all of a sudden I had a voice and, and it was just my voice. And um, I will say that, you know, we have some new leadership as well. And it has just been such a wonderful um, change. And, and I do feel like I have a voice and a seat at the table and, you know, all the things that really were unexpected, unintentional, didn't ask for, um, really just had to manage and figure those things out. Um, but it's been just such an unexpected surprise. Um, you, you, I think everyone learned how to do new things in COVID. Mm -hmm. And so that was definitely the case for me is, you know, manage this small, small particular task to now the entire task. Um, but you adapt. So I adapted, figured it out. Now love doing, you know, kind of the new role. Um, 
So I would definitely say that it propelled me forward. Before I would say in my position, it's not that I wouldn't speak up, wasn't the same person, but I didn't put myself out there in the same way because Mm -hmm. I was sitting amongst a team. And so when it is just you, you have no choice except for to kind of be, you know, kind of in that, in that, um, in that role or in that leadership role um, more, more than you would be otherwise. So definitely a pivotal, a pivotal position and and a moment in time for me that now I'm so thankful for. So thankful for sure. It's, it is a theme, isn't it? It's a theme (laughs) of, you know, big, big fish, little pond, little fish, big pond, and how, depending on where we are and what, what that pond is, how we respond, how we take responsibility how we connect because the reality is we are always expanding contracting always you know so as you mentioned earlier sometimes when you're around these absolutely incredible superstars and franchising we can shrink and believe we're smaller than what we are and we're intimidated yes. and then when we're in a team we can shrink because we have a very specific role rather than a more strategic uh role and what you have learned is how to to just adapt but but basically from small to big big to small depending on right. the situation but always always keeping in mind that it's about the relationships it's about the connections it's about um service and and your purpose never changed right your purpose has never changed so i didn't mean to ramble on but i i just think it's absolutely brilliant as i visualize it right what you have gone through what what can i say (laughs) it is so exciting so here's my question uh for you when you look back at your life, was there someone or something or a book or a sermon or a person in your life that gave you some advice that has empowered you, changed you, taken you to the next level? That's a good question. <laughs> so I would say that there are... Um, there are several people that I would um, put into that category that have molded me and shaped me into the person that I am today. Um, I will use the example of my, um, gosh, there's too many. I'll use the example example of, um, who shall I pick? I'm going to use the example of my mother-in-law. I'm going to use the example of my mother-in-law um, because she and I have, we had um, a very strong relationship. She was someone in my life that was just a constant encourager. Um, my husband and I dated for quite a while before we married. And so um, she was around for a good bit of high school, um, high school sweethearts, and then um, throughout much of our marriage as well. And so Throughout those times, um, Jennifer always encouraged me for the things that we've talked about today, to no matter what, to continue to be who you are, to pursue your dreams, um, to always make sure that your faith shines through and that people see who you really are, and then really just to never doubt yourself or or lack that confidence because other people can see it in you even if you can't see it in yourself. And so those things linger with me. And I think, um, so I lost my mother-in-law earlier this year. And so she came to mind first. I have um, many people in my life that that I would say also really kind of hone in and, and are encouragers to me within my life, my mom, my grandma. Um, there are others as well. But that particular instance when put on the spot was the one that came to mind um, as most recent, really just because we would have many talks about um, about those sorts of things. And we were both just constant encouragers to one another. So. Okay. I think we just 
found the person who was the greatest mother-in-law of, of all time. She was, you and and last she really was. Um, so you know, I joke. I have two boys, and I joke that I will be a mother-in-law as good as she was. And so, um, yes, just my mom, my mother-in-law, and and me, we were you know, all just super close, definitely a second mother to me. Um, phenomenal. And so I, I want everyone to have that because she was just fantastic. And so we were super, super close and just a great relationship and an encourager for sure. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I'm green with envy <laughs> <laughs> for a lot of reasons, but I don't think we realize the importance of a mother figure or in our lives as women. And in your case, you were a young high schooler that was being, uh, you have this second mother almost, you're a fabulous mother to start with, but now you have a second that's encouraging, loving, inspiring, guiding, teaching, whatever she needs to do. I think all young women need an elder woman, right, to come alongside of you. Not all of us have that opportunity. I, I didn't have that opportunity. And currently I am, for years, I've been a woman-to-woman -woman mentor in my church for that reason. I think we need that kind of nurturing and someone to believe in us when we don't believe. It okay. sounds like in some ways, you're you're kind of doing that in the IFA for others because you have a an extended network of close female friends and male friends. But you're probably do you think you're doing some of that now for the younger generation coming up in franchising? I definitely think that that is something that I strive for and and didn't really realized that that was a goal to begin with. But when I think now of how many connections, really with when I think of female relationships specifically, um, yes, absolutely. I, I really now look, look at myself as trying to be a connector, um, an encourager, really trying to lift up these other women in the space who are just phenomenal and are just rock stars, so good at what they do and just learn as much as I can from each and every one of them and lean on them when needed and then hope that they'll do the same with me. Um, absolutely. I, I think that, um, that definitely that that is a goal that I hope to continue with and, and something that I, I hope that people look at me and say, yep, she's definitely somebody that, you know, connected me to so and so or, or vice versa, for sure. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So Carly, where can our listeners get a hold of you? So probably the easiest way would be just to find me on LinkedIn, Carly Woolley. Um, and then if you'd like to, to shoot me an email, um, it's just cwoolley at franchise.org. Those are probably the two quickest ways to connect with me. So I do have another question. Okay. <laughs> Being an Auburn alumni, are you still an Auburn fan? Absolutely. Die hard. Die I hard. think it's, I think Auburn fans are Auburn fans for life, right? We are. Yes, we are. And um, it, it's definitely a thing. It's, it's, a, it's, I think a more so a thing in the South, but then also for, for our family personally, um, we, we love college football and definitely still support and love all things Auburn. So yes, yeah. for sure. For sure. We, we had someone you know uh, rather well, Paula Pizarro from Pride Staff on the show probably two years ago now. Okay. I have to have her back, um, who is a crazy Auburn uh, fan, um, went it. to Auburn, and yes. she and her husband actually, even though they're no longer living in Alabama, will fly back for games on a regular uh, basis so that's fantastic yes my husband works for Auburn now so we just can't get away can't get away 
Hey, Carly, I have another personal question for you. Absolutely. You're, you're not only making an impact internationally, professionally, but also with your philanthropic work, from what I understand. Can you tell us a little about Life Beads? Yeah, absolutely. So um, not that I have a ton of free time, but, um, you know, <laughs> when you uh, when you do when I do have some free time, something that I'm passionate about is um, one, I'm a jewelry fanatic, but then two, anything that that gives a bit of extra purpose always makes sense to me. And so um, I my husband and I um, both fell in love with um, a particular ministry called Life Beats. Um, it's through Four Corners Ministries. Um, the ministry or the Life Beads program is um, based in northern Uganda. Um, there are 36 African women who create these um, this jewelry. And so the jewelry are their paper beads. So I have earrings here and then I have um, some bracelets. They're hand rolled paper beads. And so the, um, the women make the life beads. And then as a partner, I am um, able to sell these beads stateside um, to anyone that might be interested Interested. And so the um, the profits and proceeds go back to the um, the Life Beads women, the Acholi ladies, um, and it helps them support their families financially. So you know, buying jewelry and, and loving jewelry and that sort of thing. If I'm buying something with purpose and know what it's you know what it's supporting and supporting more than than just, you know, um, buying it online somewhere. And it's so much more meaningful for me. And so I enjoy doing that in my free time and um, have just really, really loved um, getting to know more about the ladies and the ministry and just all things um, uh, about, about the program. Thanks for asking. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's interesting because as I'm listening, my first thought was there's layers of purpose here, right? Serve the father, you know, our big God. And then there's that kind of second level of purpose behind the IFA that you absolutely believe in and work full time in and love what you're doing. And then there's this other one, which is to serve women, right? Mm -hmm. To act as a mentor yourself and to support women, whether they're here or they're internationally in Uganda. But I think it really all, it isn't layers of purposes or a different purpose. It's a single purpose. Right. It's a single purpose um, to, to be a reflection of God and to serve others using your talent to not hide it in any way but to be out there and bodacious about it which has required you to be authentic and to be real and to make connections it's it's something big you know that's a will within you to um make a difference in that way and i i applaud you i i applaud how bodacious you are um, about your purpose and how it has turned into a passion. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I have enjoyed speaking with you both so much today. I've um, just had such a great time. It's been such a fun um, conversation to have for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, we've enjoyed having you. Tracy, any final thoughts from you before we head out? You know, just one thing, which is that years ago, I heard that we are a reflection of our families and a reflection of our communities and a reflection of our faith organizations. And, and it just grows out from there. So kind of in line with what you were saying, Rebecca, I feel that, Carly, you're such an amazing representation of all of that you know, from, from the core, from the center, from the hearth, right? And then just building it out. So thank you for being you and for being such a great role model for those who are following behind you in franchise. It's beautiful and in the world. Yes, absolutely. I appreciate that. For sure. 
So thank you to the rest of you that are listening in today to the Franchise Woman podcast where passion and purpose collide, profits are made, and relationships are forged. Please tune in next week for another episode.